Hi, I'm Joan, and I'm here to um, teach you how to make a silver silk necklace with like a built-in pendant on um, the silver silk jewel loom. Uh, um, so what we're going to do is make a pendant where we're going to leave the long part and put it over our necks, and then it's going to be built in in between the ends. If um, you find that you want it shorter, all you have to do then is trim out the middle to have enough, you know, what you want to shorten so you still have a nice long piece um, to use for, or a longer piece to use for something else like a bracelet or some earrings or something, and then attach your clasp. But I'm designing it so it's over my head. So um, the inspiration for this necklace is actually um, from one of um, Jewel's workshops that she had a few months ago, and it's a rose trellis bracelet. And I told her, I said, well, wouldn't that be cool Does in, in between um, silver silk as a pendant? And I asked her for permission if I could teach this, and she said, sure, because she was really excited about the idea. So we're only going to um, do one section of it from the loops down to here. And, and you can see why it's rose trellis. This um, little bead just acts like the rose, you know, it's climbing up the trellis. Uh, I'm going to use basically mostly the same colors except for I'm adding a little bit more color where you see a lot of clear. So what we're going to be using is four millimeter fire polish beads. On my board I have five, but you know, you're designing your own so you can pick out the colors you want. And then we're um, using these little tr two hole triangle beads. And um, we have... Um, Three colors of those like a candy apple green like a brownish color and um, a reddish color and then we're also going to be using um, some eight mil um, some eight OC beads I'm just using some that's going to be um, that I have left from another project just a little bit because most of it's going to be hidden underneath these loops and uh, sorry <laughs> and I'm also going to be using the loops to hide the knots as best as I can then uh, we're also going to be using size 11 O's and I got like these um, green seed beads and some what would I do with that little bag? <laughs> and there's some, well, it's this color you could see in here. Some of uh, um, these like darker, I guess a purpley red with some pearly colors in it that complement it. And I had some left over from this project, so I'm going to use that. So like I said, mix it up to where it's going to be eye pleasing to you. So I have... Um, so we're going to warp the board, and what I'm going to use for the warps is some white hemp and white um, silver silk capture chain. And then also, um, we're going to be using some white fire, wildfire. And then to end the project, you know, when we get to the end and we take it off the loom, we're going to, I'm going to, um, you can use either these um, custom silver silk custom finding um, ends without the loops and, or with the loops. And if you use the ones with the loops, you can have little dangles off of it or maybe you want to hang some chain. So, so let's get started on this. I'm going to warp the loop, loom in front of this because I noticed when I was recording my last video, <laughs> I kept taking the loom off. So what we need is um, to start the limb, I'm going to um, wrap it with this first and then put the um, silver silk on either side. I should have opened this end. And this is also from the Jewel Loom Shop. And you know, I was talking about um, Jewel's workshop where we learned to make that fa uh, flower trellis. She makes the, um, she teaches us in these workshops how to design. I know we could do something exactly like hers or we can just um, go off on our own and make it, which is great because I've learned a lot of um, designing um, 
techniques through her and it's a great workshop so it's monthly and you get the kit with it and I will and sometimes you get some great surprises with it like this month we got um, a um, her little mini 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 um, warrior um, loom business card and we also got um, a thing to make tassels with you know how you wrap it around so and they're really cute besides the um, kit to make the project for this month okay so what I'm gonna start is on the top I'm gonna start on the third row and um, I'm gonna try to tie this on the bottom here So just um, put it where it will line up better with the holes on the side. See, I'm making it go through the top, down the side, and then tying it around one of the big teeth. Just pick the tooth that looks works best with it. I want the knot to be tight, so I'm going to do the second tie, but I want to make sure that the knot underneath gets really tight too. And then I'm taking it up to that um, third slot across to the third slot on the other side. Now you can just wrap around the tooth here, and then we're going to go to the next slot next to it, you know, the slot going towards the middle. We're going to wrap around the other side and go down to the side teeth and then we're going to skip a slot and go to the next slot you know and try to keep your um, warps tight. I'm not as good at it as, as Jules is. Hers sounds like you could almost play the guitar on it. She's got it so tight. <laughs> Okay, so you should end up with um, four um, strings. So then what you want to do then is um, cut it off. I'm going to cut it off and make it long enough to tie. Sometimes I worry too much about wasting and then I make it more difficult on myself. I'm just going to go ahead and tie these together too just to help make it tighter just to um, help it not slide off some you know slide around or whatever it's something I do on the original jewel loom I'm just going to try it on here But, you know, if you're wanting to, feel free to use the bead stoppers like I showed in my last tutorial with the bracelet. So here we got this. And what we're going to do now is the part where I tied at the ends, I'm, I want that to be the top. 
So I want the ends of the jewel loom then to go to the other end and it's going to go on either side of the warps. And um, to be honest with you, I'm going to use a little bit of length so when I could trim it off, it's not going to, um, I mean, I'll have enough length to make an earring or something. Because I sh should still have a long enough length to um, you know for the to slide it over my head that way I'm not wasting silver silk if I can cut it off enough to um, use for something else so here's the end that um, the loopy I'm just taking it in the ends and um, pushing it down not too tight because I don't want to ruin the silver silk but just, uh, oops, I put that in the wrong tooth. I put that in the wrong tooth. Because it should go in the teeth just on either side of the other warps. Okay, so then it's going to be hanging down here. But like I said, if you decide you want a shorter necklace, not one hanging down so far, you can always figure it out and trim it if you want to get that part out of your way. Okay, so I'm going to take it to the other screen now so I can, um, so we can begin bead weaving. <laughs> okay, now we're going to start um, weaving on the loom. First of all, I got, I'm guessing about a yard and a half. I actually started this earlier and I really messed up the first row pretty badly. I mean, so I just cut some of it off and took the beads off, restarting now. So... So I went through the silver silk and I'm going to try to tie a knot on the bottom. You know, hidden underneath the silver silk. And I leave a strand so I can feed it through the beads a little bit later to, um, you know, just I like to hide the end of the thread and it helps support everything a little bit better. So another loop one more knot or one more tie underneath and get that one out of the way now I'm taking my thread underneath the warps and I got my um, seed beads I'm going to use right here so I'm going to pick up, let's see, I figured, let's see, it's going to be two, two, five, two, two. So that's 13 seed beads. I'm going to pick it up. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Now the first row is always the hardest row for me. Um, like I said, you want between the warps um, two, two, five, two, two. And I always have a hard time doing that. So when I can't get done right to begin with, I'll fix it after I get the row um, done. So I'm gonna go over the first warp, which is the silver silk. Go through the first two beads. It's a little bit harder, too, because the um, hemp is sitting a little bit lower than the silver silk. But once you get the first row or two done, it'll be a lot easier. Okay, so I got... I picked up two, I'm going over the warp. I pick up two, I'm going over, the needle's going over the warp. I'm gonna pick up five. One, two, three, four. Move one over to the other side of the warp. Five, let's go over the warp. Need to pick up two more. So you know, I'm shuffling, shuffling some of the beads around so they're gonna be on the correct 
section of the warp. And then I'm going up the last bead. I didn't make it over the silver silk warp, but I'm going to pull the thread through. Take the needle back on the other side of the silver silk and then come back up with it. And then I'll go over. It's a little bit easier since the silver silk sitting a little bit higher. Now I like to lock the first row of beads in place. So I'm going to go back through them. I'm going to go under the warps again, going back through the beads. I want to make sure that my, um, you know, that my strings are pulled right. You don't want to pull them too tight, but you don't want any loops showing at the ends. Okay, go over the. Go under the, go through the two beads, under the warps, go under the two beads. And if you have trouble hitting the next set of beads, sometimes I just take it and go through, go under the warp, pull the needle through, and then go back and go through the beads that, you know, where I ended at. Because it gets a little frustrating if you keep fighting with it. I just rather find an easier way and then go on. And that's the thing about, um, you know, with any jewelry technique, you want to find what's good for you to do, not, you know, that's why I like watching several artists. You don't want to do something you find harder, and then you might find another artist does something that you it just clicks with you a lot better, and it's a lot easier on you. So I do... Um, So I do like watching several artists do things and then I'll just mix up their techniques to make what's good for me. So once again, I didn't, I missed the last two beads. So I went under the silver silk loom warp, the last one, to hit those two beads and then I'm going to go under the silver silk warp. And then this should make it easier going back over. For me, over is always easier than under as far as when you're trying to line everything up. Let me try to turn it this way, see if you can see it in the camera a lot better. I'm moving my needle down so I have more to work with. So you see I went over that warp here but I still have four more beads to catch. I hope that's not confusing to you. It's just that I do it instead of just trying to struggle to get to the next bead if I can't catch it before going over the next warp. So let me try this so you can see. And a part of it is too, because we're at the very end. Usually I work in the middle, but with this brace, a neck, necklace, you know, I'm working almost right up against the, and so then I just have to go through the two warps again. And remember, when we're um, teaching you things, oh man, under the, uh, you know, we're teaching you techniques, you know, so you can see what works for you. And then you can combine all those techniques to design something that um, is your creation. But, you know, there's no big deal about um, following along with somebody else either. But it's great to learn different techniques so you can do your own designing. And 
I just messed up my board. Okay, so I'm going to pick up 13 more beads to do the second row. And, the, and this is what our loops are going to go through. Uh, let's see, seven, eight. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Okay. I should have went under the warps before picking up those beads. I'm really bad about that. Tying up my silver silk again. So now I'm going to go back over so I want two in the first column so I'll go over the silver silk try to do this where you can see it go over the silver silk pick up two Go over the hemp. Sorry, it's really hard to do this on camera where you can see it. And I'm trying to warp, I mean, weave at the same time. <laughs> okay. Two. I'm going over the first hemp warp, picking up two, going over the second hemp warp, picking up five, or going through five, I shouldn't say, because I'm not picking up, they're already there. Going over the next hemp warp, going through the two, going over the last hemp warp, Going through the two and then going over the silver silk. Okay. Making sure I don't have any wildfire loops hanging out down there. Now, we are getting ready to start the um, main part of the bracelet that's not the loops. So I want to pick up seven fire polish. I'm going to do the clear. That's how I had it originally laid out. And I messed it up when I was moving the board around. Sorry, I don't have the beads in screen. I just have a really small space that the camera will pick up to work with. Okay, I got four, five. This is four millimeter fire polish. Six, seven. Once again, I forgot to go underneath, but that's no big deal. I'm going underneath with the needle, lining up the fire polish. And there's going to be one fire polish between each string, except for in the middle, there'll be three. I'm going back over the silver silk. Going through the first fire polish. Over the hemp, second fire polish. Over the hemp, going through three more fire polish. over the hemp. Now this, I love sparkle. This is sparkly fire polish, but when I was making the bracelet, ran out of some of the sparkly and there was like the formula fire, fire polish beads between the, um, the triangle beads when they were on the strand and I used those. They're a little bit duller, but they're clear and it worked. <laughs> so sometimes you just have to go 
and do um, something a little bit easier when you're in a pinch. Okay, going back under the needles. And now my next one, I have two clear fire, po fire polish. And of course, I'm not wanting to pick them up as easily. And then I have um, a green. Looks kind of like a dark, gr dark green, purpley color. A green. And two more fire polish. So I'm lining them up just like I did the previous row. Make sure you go over the, the warps as you're going back through all the beads. Make sure the beads are spaced. Sorry about that. Um, make sure your beads are spaced across. You can see how I have the, I already went through back way, the fire polish, and I'm going back through over the tops of the warps now. And I have the fire polish lined up. Now I'm going back over underneath the warps again. And for my next row, let's see, I'm going backwards. So for my next row, I got green, brown. This is I'm lining it out because I messed it up so much. Brown, green. Okay, so this is the, the first row we're using two hole fire polish. Uh, on my design, I'm picking up a green one first, and then that darker color, and then now see the I have it on the needle here, and see um, here's my um, uh, triangle bead. I want. The point up and I want to go through the top no I want to go through the bottom row because I'm working from bottom to top so I want that triangle staying up and then I'm going to put the green one on the same way so you always want to make sure they go in the same direction and then the next darkish one the same way the red one and when you're doing this you also want to make sure that your triangle beads all have holes in the top because it get, gets frustrating when you go through and um, you don't have the holes on the other side when you get to that part. So I just ran another needle through it and it does have the holes are clear. And then I got to pick up another darkish green color and my final green color for this row. And we gotta line them up. The fire polish beads are all go one at in each column on either side, and the three triangles go in the middle. Okay. So I'm going back over over the silver silk through the first fire polish, over the hemp through the uh, fire pop for second fire polish. Over the hemp, go through the three triangles, the same holes you used before when you're putting the needle through. And then you're going to go through the last two while going over the warps. And then over the silver silk. And I line this up where I want them. 
So I want the points almost to the, um, in my design, I want the points almost to the fire polish that's below them. Now, now here's the, um, now we, you want to go to the other side where there's the other holes in the fire polish, I mean in the triangles, but you want to pick up two um, fire polish first before going through the top of the holes. Remember, now, I use green and then that dark color. This time I'm using the dark color than the green. I'm going underneath. Then I'm picking up the holes in the top of the triangle beads. And I'm going underneath again. And I'll pick up the last two. So I want it, the darker bead and the green bead. And then going back through is a lot easier. Just a minute. Silver, silver silk up through the bead, over the hemp, through the bead, over the hemp, through the three triangles at the top, because we're working from bottom to top, and on this necklace, and then over the, um, through the uh, last three fire polish as I go over the warps. And I just wanna make sure they're laying correctly, because they're lined, we want them lined up with the holes so the, there'll be little spaces, we want that. You know, remember it's a climbing trellis. Now, the next part is what I call the rose part. I'm, um, just a minute, because I messed this all up, but I'm lining them up again. Because I don't want colors above touching the same color below or something similar to Okay, so for this next row, I'm going under, and I'm going to work with the two-hole bead again. And that's this rose. So while I'm at it, I'm just going to make sure that all the row holes are clear by sticking my needle through it, but I'm not going to feed it all the way in. Okay, so now I'm going to, um, you know, so I forgot about mentioning this little um, hexagon bead. Well, it's six-sided. And it looks kind of like a rose, you know, when you get it in here. And it's got two holes on the side. And that's what we're working for next. And in this design, we only have the one. So I'm going to put in on a clear fire polish. And then I like a really light brownish, grayish bead. And I'm going to go through the bottom hole of the um, rose. Well, I call it like hexagon bead goes through the bottom row and then I'm going to put on the little brownish color and another clear. Feed it through. And now I kind of sprayed this apart a tiny bit so um, the um, rose bead isn't touching the triangles but once we get back through we can kind of adjust it there so now go over your silver silk and go through the beads again while you're going over the warps making sure you go through the bottom hole of that hexagon bead i guess it's really a septagon bead but it's easier to remember hexagon because it's only six-sided I got off the screen again. I'm so sorry about that. So you can see, you can see I went through the beads. I went through the bottom hole of the septagon bead. 
and went through there and then I went back going over the warps to do the other side. Now we got to go go under the warps again to pick up the two um, other two we want to use on that side. So we want fire polish, clear, fire polish, brownish. No, I want the opposite of what I used before. So I want the fire polish brownish and fire polish clear. We're under the warps. Then we're going to go through the top hole. I got to extend my thread. Sorry about that. Need to move my needle down. I'm going to have to add more thread soon. So we still got a lot of work to do. Okay, so we're going over underneath and hitting the hole, the top hole of the hexagon bead. And then I'm going to pick up a clear and a brownish. bead. Now I'm going to go back over the warps but going through the same beads backwards. You can see once you got that first row done how fast it goes now. Now we're going back under the warps and we're going to pick up, no, we want to, we want to check our um, triangle beads to make sure all the holes are clear. That's something you can do at the beginning. I never think about it until I go use the beads. Okay, so I'm going to put on a brownish. Um, triangle, the bottom hole of it, so the point's facing upwards. And then I'm going to put on the um, apple color. And let's see. Then I am going to pick up a clear fire polish. Kind of ran out of the light brownish color. So just for a tiny pop of color, I threw in um, a blue bead right in the middle. So it's going to be three fire polish between the two triangles on either end. And make sure when you're putting in the bottom hole the point of the top is pointing upward so you're not having the point facing downwards and notice it after you get it all done. Okay, so there'll be a triangle bead on each, between each warp, except the center warp will have the um, three fire polish beads. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish um, going back through and going over the warps and then I'll arrange where I want the beads. It's a lot easier that way, you know, since we have tiny gaps. And I ran out thread again. Okay. Move my needle down. Yeah, I got those there. I mean, you can have them right up against the beads if that's what you choose. I like the tiny gaps in them, but that's something I might be able to fix when I go back through. Now, I am going to go now, go through the top holes while I'm going underneath the warps. Go through the top holes of the triangle beads, just the first two, because I'm going to have to pick up my fire polish.
Make sure you stay under the warts as you're going through the holes. Okay, now go under the third warp, which is the second head warp, and you want to pick up. How did I do that? And then I need my um, three. Fire polish. I'm just putting some fire polish in between those, those beads. Remember, you can use whatever colors you want. I kind of messed up on the last dress, so I'm just kind of making this a mixture of colors. <laughs> I'm not going to take it apart. And then I'm going to, you know, messed up from what I wanted the colors to be. So then I'm going to go through, after I put on the three fire polish, I'm going to go through the last two holes of the um, triangle beads, you know, at the top of the beads. And I'm going to go back through. So I'm going back through all, well, making sure the needle stays on top of the warps. Okay. I'm going to move my thread down some more. Now it's going to just be fire polish. I'm going to put on two clear fire polish, three colored fire, fire polish, and then two clear fire polish. Now go over the warps and go back through the beads again. this and then I'll catch that last one and go over the silver silk warp. There we go. Now, we only have one more row of 
fire polish left, but I'm running out of um, wildfire, so I'm going to do my technique to add more that I showed in my last tutorial. If you haven't seen it, you'll get to see it now. I'm going to take about a yard of fire polish, I mean of wildfire off, cut it. And what I do is I'm going to take the other end off the needle and I'm going to tie the ends. Make sure it's tight. And then you want to grab like a thread burner or be careful if you use a lighter. Okay, I wasn't sure if you could see the um, white thread. And I think I might took off the screen, so I'm going to record this again with some black thread. You want to turn on your burner, and on this one, a little um, puff of thread comes off when it's hot, and you touch it to the end until it forms a little ball. Okay, then you take um, the other thread that you want to add on to it and do the same thing. Do the same thing with it, just now I want to make sure it's on camera. So you got two little balls on the end, I don't know if you can see it. Now you're going to tie the two strings together. You know, with the ball ends. Tight, tight, because you don't want the balls to go through. Once you tie it tight, you know, take the other two ends of the string away from the ball ends and just yank it tight until both balls join into one little bit bigger ball. And then you can just thread your um, thread again onto your needle and start from there might be a little struggle getting through um, the first, you know, the first beads, but, um, you know, it works because I've gotten through as small as the 11 O's. So I'm going back to my white thread and I'm going to thread that back onto the needle. Kind of changed my arrangement, hoping you could see better and I won't move off camera. I keep an old quilt back of it on the table for when me and Ginger work on stuff and I just decided to start using it for this too to keep the table from scratching up. And so that's what I'm working on. Okay. We have one more row of fire polish to put on the um, loom so I'm going to take my needle underneath the loom. And I'm going to pick up seven fire polish. Three, four, five, six, seven. See, now I got to tug them over that knot. And I line them up here like I did the last row. And I'm using all clear here because the um, loops at the top are going to cover them um, some. So once you get lined up, go over the warps and go back through the beads. Make sure your needle stays over the warps. That way it makes sure that the um, beads stay up and don't drop down. Oops, I got to tug again to get that knot through. 
I missed my last one, so I gotta go through that. Okay. Okay, so now all we have to do um, is see if I can put these here so you can see what I'm doing. We're gonna make the last two rows of um, for the seed beads where we're gonna put the loops. So these are the eight O's and I'm gonna pick up 13 of them. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, okay. See, I forgot to go under, but I was wanting you to see what I was doing too. So I guess it wouldn't work going under first. And remember, we're working top, bottom to top because this is gonna be the bottom of the pendant. I guess you can reverse it if you want. It could be the top of the pendant if that's what you want. Okay, I'm lining up the where I want the beads with the warps. I, it's going to go between the warps two, two, five, two, two. Just like at the the first two rows on this. So over the warps, go back through your beads. Staying over the warps. Okay. Okay. See, that was six instead of five, so I'm going to move one of those seeds beads back to the next section. So I got five, two. I do like working with the bigger beads on um, the limb because you can whip up a project a lot faster than with the small beads. <laughs> oh, see, look, one of my beads fell down back here, so I'm going to have to go through again. I backed my needle out before I pulled it all the way through. So there's two, warp, two over the warp, five over the warp, two over the warp, two over the warp. And then over the silver silk. And hopefully this will be the last time we have to mess with that knot. Okay. Now, we're going to pick up 13 more, and this is our last row of seed beads. One, two, three. Last row of eight O's. Okay, it's five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So that's all I got left of um, about five or six of those little things, maybe ten. The, I have a seed bead bag of six O's. I think I'll start one of eight O's. That way, whenever I just need tiny beads on a project, I can just pull out and see if they have the color in there. Like, you know, like if you put one on the head pin and your bead has too big of a hole, you could put that on the bottom of a head pin. Okay, so I'm trying to line up my beads so it goes to two. two. Five two two between the warps. I think it knows it's the last row. Okay, two over the warp. Two. Leave that warp belongs. Get that out of the way. Over the warp. Five. 
a little warmth to you. A little warp into you and then over the silver silk warp. See, we're past that one knot, so I don't have to worry about it anymore. So make sure everything's lined up. And now we're going to start with the um, loops. I decided we're going to start the top of it. And when I um, started making this, I decided to um, do... 15 loops, um, 15 C beads at the top and um, fifth, uh, 19 at the bottom because there's a little bit more to cover at the bottom when we start working on um, finishing up, um, you know, if you want to add decoration or something. So I'm getting out one color. We're going to use two colors of seed beads and I tend to do like every other one. Um, one color and this one's a mix of like of a pearly rose and a dark rose and then Let's see. Where's my other one? And uh, and one to complement the apple Okay, now I'll tell you what I'm going to do is because this went over the top when it was coming out. And let me change it. I'm going to move my needle down. So um, I'm going to go underneath, but now I'm going to come back out on the top of the first bead. So I'm going to go underneath the warp to go through the first bead. That way my bead's not falling off. And then after that, it doesn't matter until you get to the next row. And then you come out. And now I'm going to put on, let's see, I'm going to put on 15 of the rosy colors, the darky rose colors. Um, three. I just, um, I guess it doesn't matter how you do it, but I usually like putting at least three at the bottom because I like this one rosy, the pearly ones showing more. I lost count. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Well, 13, 14, just mix it up however you want to do it. So, so my thread came out of the first one. We're going to go back to the beat front first, the hole and go out the first one and through the second one then over the warp. So now we went through it for, one through the, for, for, when you do it, start a row, you go through the first bead, and after that, you go through two beads. See, by doing that, I created that loop. Now, I'm going to get um, 15 of the green beads, and I went, you know, came out of the second one. Three, four. I'm just going to show you a few of these first, and then I'll, um, I'm not going to bore you with it. I'm doing all of them. Let's see. Two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Okay, now I'm going to go into the second bead on the side I came in before. Sorry, I usually get in there really quickly. Then I'm also going to go through the third bead. And I'm going to come out. 
And by backtracking, that was, that's what forms the loop. You know, I back, back to the third, second B. Now I'm going to do the 15 again. I want to make sure I keep those loops tight. So since I came out what um, came out of the third loop, B, that's what I'm going to go back into. This, you know, the side I went in before, and then I also want to go through the fourth bead. So you also want to go through the next bead each time. Just try and keep my loop straightened out. And then 15 more beads. And you're just going to keep doing this until you get across all the way. You know, go out one, go into backtrack, go in one, that, the last one you went out, go, you know, and then go in that one again in this, um, and the next one. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Okay, so I'm going to backtrack and go into the one that I just came out of, you know, on the end I went into the first time out of it, to backtrack to make the loop, and then also go through this next bead and come out of it. You'll do that till you get to the end. Okay, so now I'm uh, at the last two beads. So I'm going to, I just came out of the, la the next to the last bead. I put, I thought I put on 15, yeah, I put on 15 um, bead, seed beads, so 11.0s. I'm going back through it, backtracking to go through it, and I'm coming out the last one. I have to move the loops around so they don't go over each other. And then I have my last loop to make. One, two, three, four, Okay, so I go back through the last bead, you know, backtrack and go back through that last bead in that row. Oh, 
Oh, I don't want to go in. <laughs> okay. Um, and I come out. And then I, I'm, I'm trying to extend the thread again. Um, I'm going to wrap it around to come underneath the silver silk so you don't see the fire line, uh, wildfire coming through. You know, wrap, you know, just crossing over. So I'm going to go underneath through the first hole in the next row. You know, remember we're only doing this to the seed bead rows. And then coming out the first speed. And then we're going to start the process all over again for this row. When you get to the end, since we're using silver silk, just tie it off because you can hide the knot underneath the end. It's not going to be as obvious. And then you could um, go down to the last two rows of, silver, of the beads and just start all over again to do um, that. And then I'll um, grab another project and show you how to finish it off. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this, and then I'll be right back with you. Okay, so we just have to do um, two more beads on this one. I, you can see I switch and I show you a different color story um, with the blues. So this is what the necklace we're going to finish up on, and I'll show you what the other one looks like finished. So 19 beads on each loop. Three, four. Six. Let me get these up here. I don't really want to um, add more strings when I have two more loops to go. Seven, eight. If you miss count and you're off by one or two, it's not going to hurt it. Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, okay. Now I'm going through the last two beads, seed beads, to make that loop, you know, backtrack to the one. I went through two so I can make the last loop. Fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay. Oops, I only need 19, not 20. Okay, now I'm going to go through that last loop. Now I'm going to take it through the silver silk towards the bottom of it so I can tie it up underneath to make it a little bit easier. You can make the knot. I went through the silver silk after going through the last bead. I'm cut, and then I'm going through again because I want to try to hide the knot underneath. So I've got that little loop. I'm going to go around it and tie it down. And I'm going to try to go through it and tie another knot. Got my loop. Ah, didn't like that, did it? Oh, it went over the bead. Um, okay, so I got my other loop and it automatically went in through there. So I made sure that the string went through the loop. I'm going to tie it down. And now I'm just going to go back. Um, I'm just going to try to hide the string underneath. I'm going to go back underneath the silver silk. And back through. I used blue elsewhere. I don't know how I ended up with the white here. Blue fire, wildfire. 
So just going to go back through these seeds, I mean beads, so I can just kind of hide my end. Doesn't matter this, because I'm just trying to hide my line. I'm not going to try to go in or out. Okay, that one's being stubborn, so I'm just going to end it there. And um, cut it next to the bead. Try not to cut any of your other wildfire elsewhere while you're cutting it. You could use your thread zapper, but I forgot to put all that next to me when I started this. Okay, I'm going to set that aside. You can see my silver socks ready to come off. I accidentally broke the tube, so I put, <laughs> put some in this plastic bag. They say these little Ziploc bags for different things. Okay. Now we're going to take it off. Um, let me zoom out. Okay. We're going to turn it over. And see, I used a, paper, a binder clip, I mean, to um, tighten my warps because they got a little bit loose. You can also use like a um, you know, bead, um, what do you call those, those bead clippies, bead stoppers. Okay. And take it off the other end. These knots. Okay, now you're going to see why I made those um, knots. Um, I mean, those big, bigger loops because we want to hide our knots. So I'm going to take um, the um, ends of them. Well, just to let you know first, before I start tying this, I'm going to be using um, terminators for this um, silver silk here at the ends, these terminators. You can also use the regular end caps with the loops if you want to hang some dangles off the side. When I tried on the first necklace, it was too long for me to put dangles on because I intended on putting like another bead underneath and a tassel of beads on the side, but it was just too long for me. But you can put it on yourself and see if you want dangles. And if you do, or you can even, instead of dangly stuff, you could even, through the loops, maybe put a beaded chain around it or something. You know, there's a lot of different things you can do for the design. And if you wanted to hang something below, you could get like a string and do some barrel knots, I mean a ring, and put some barrel knots to hang the ring below, you know, use one string for a hoop, loop, and put a bar another barrel knot around it, you know, just work in pairs next to each other, or you can hide it, but just make sure that your um, ring's hanging down here, and maybe even um, put, you know, wire wrap a bead in here and hang something off of it. 
So, but I, in this case, I'm just going to tie it and it's so it, it'll be hiding better. I'm just doing like tying it like a shoe and then the second knot the same way or the second tie. So that way it'll be hidden up there and we're going to glue them before cutting them. And we're going to do the same thing up here. You know, if you're wanting to do extra things on the end, you could, um, before you tie up here, you can, or even start tying, you can gently move them down, and then you just have to adjust your beads. I didn't sew through the silver silk, but if you're one of them that um, sew through the silver silk when you're going to the next row or whatever, um, that'll hold your beads in place. But when I do that, I just kind of straighten it out with my hand and line them back up. Now for the glue, I'm using GS Hypo Cement, and I just, just to be on the safe side, you don't want to tie your knots super tight where it's moving the warps, but everywhere where um, the strings meet each other or cross each other, I'm putting a little bit of glue just so it won't come undone. I don't know if it's too much, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. I don't want to be wearing it and all of a sudden everything falls off. And my husband is home, so you hear him coming in the background. Okay, so the best way to put this back on, that, let me wipe the blue cap on, is I learned this little trick from Myra Banks, and it's pretty cool. She said put the needle in the um, tip at 45 degree angles, and I usually get it in the wrong, and then just gently lift up, you know, straightening out, and it goes right in. Isn't that pretty cool? I haven't had a problem since, only if I try to do it wrong. Okay, so I'm going to cut these down to about quarter to eight of an inch. I don't want to cut it all the way down to the knot. Now, we just need to um, um, put on the little terminators. And usually I would use it with Tool Magic, but I went to recoat it. I only did one coat and I um, didn't do it again when I, so I'm gonna use giant nylon jaw pliers, which is a little bit harder. So I'm gonna open this up a little bit. I love my needle nose pliers here. I got it as a gift from um, Amber and Trish, but they're great to open it up slightly. And then you look where you want the um, to put this. I'm going to try to line it up with the ends of the loops. Now 
you need to eyeball it too to try to get it straight across. But you want to cut up, you know, that looks, let me cut one down here. If it's too long, then I'll, I could trim one off. Yeah, I'm going to cut one more ball off of this. There we go. Now, you want to get your terminator and you want it facing upwards. The SS isn't on here and the monogram for silver silk. So, uh, but I still want it facing upwards. I don't want the seam to show. And if you have a tr trouble closing it this way, which it does tend to um, slip on me. <laughs> I'll show you what I do with the other necklace. <laughs> I held it down and I took my... <laughs> <laughs> Don't get mad at me for this delay. <laughs> Let me get that back in there. Make sure it's all pinched in. No snow stray silver silk. And I have it right there. And I'm going to try to close it by pushing this down with the nylon job part. Come on. Well, it worked on the last necklace. Um, okay. Just want to make sure it's closed all the way. And then you want to do the same thing for the other side. Ta-da! It's done now. Get my scraps out of here. And that is it. We successfully made it. Add you terminators. And I just wanted to show you where it hangs on me. I just, like I said, I didn't want a lot of things hanging like right here. So, um, you know, it's a nice ch neck, ne chest necklace and it comes off easily. And I still have a couple pieces left. The nice long, you know, that I can make earrings to go with it. And here's the white one with the, made with the white silver silk. Um, so... If you have it, I'll have all the links to everything down in, um, below um, the video. And if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in chat or put them below the video and I'll go ahead, you know, and I'll answer them. I'll check from time to time. I am on vacation next week, so it'll be the week after if you write anything next week, Sunday on. So, um, hope you all have a great day and thank you for joining me.